and welcome back to Block TV. It's time for Trader's Take. As Bitcoin's price touches $13,000 alongside its market dominance, which has grown to a whopping 65%, it's time to check in with technical analyst Joe Saz to give us a glimpse of where the markets might be heading. Joe, thanks for joining us. Is it cause for celebration or fears of manipulation? Well, I, I think it's we're, we're fearing manipulation, but obviously everyone's kind of cheering this on. A lot of the hodlers have really no incentive to be upset about this. You know, I, I don't think they understand the overall implications of why you'd pump the market and, and what it means on the on the tail end. But yeah, I mean, this is cause to celebrate if you're making money. I, I, I think, um, you know, if, uh, if obviously I, I think there's some sort of moral and ethical thing to, to pay attention to here. But yeah, make, make some money and, and try to ride the tide while you can. Let's jump into the charts and take a quick look at what's going on here. Um, we have uh, we have another printing of uh, $100 million uh, US dollar tethers uh, yesterday. Um, so I mean, it's it's kind of it's double. We're, we're double stacked right here. We have 200 million tethers in the market, and in other words, U.S. dollars, because that's how they're treated. So we have a lot of money sitting around waiting to to either pump the market or to prevent it from crashing, like like this. So we actually just had a nice bit of price action in this candle. We were down uh, to a low of 12.7, uh, almost flat, and now we're pumping back through 12.875. So in this you know, uh, we, we got bought out of a downside move. I mean, if I wasn't on right now, I, I would strongly consider a buy. I think this is a, an excellent looking reversal candle. And you know, I love my uh, my hammers. So Bitcoin US dollar on the 15 minute chart is looking good. Again, we're looking especially good because we're backed by the support of 100 million tethers uh, just printed uh, earlier um, yesterday evening. Um, so we're looking at a good reversal here. I, I'm actually, you know, the second um, second we end, I might even jump into a trade here. I got to watch this. Um, so on to uh, quickly on to the daily. Uh, this is pretty significant now. This is this was everything in my eyes. Um, breaking this lo higher local high was important uh, for the bulls, and uh, sustaining it was even more important. Uh, but we didn't just sustain it. We broke. The, what was initially considered a, a bear, a bull trap. So, I mean, this thing is just, we're just taking off and uh, we've now breached uh, the the highest point um, close. Now, that doesn't mean much yet, but uh, I, I think this is a very bullish narrative, still intact. I, uh, I, I'm, I I'm going to be playing this. No, no doubt about it. This thing's going, this thing still has some steam. And again, this thing still has some steam because we have a clear, uh, you know, two hundred million dollars over the course of two days, being being pumped into the market. So, uh, we have a guarantee of, of incoming money. Shorts are starting to grow in confidence now. I think this is a fake out. I don't think I think short I think shorts are making a big mistake right now. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, uh, they're growing. We're at 14k shorts against 24 k longs. Now that is after a 67 percent decrease in shorts reported by Bitfinex. You know, there's a lot of controversy there. We we won't go into it right now, but um, you know, we, we are looking like a steady increase in short confidence, which doesn't mean much to me yet. Uh, you know, but basically, what I'm fearing is when we prime, we, when we become primed for a short squeeze. Now we're nearing. Uh, let's see, we're on the weekly here. Ethereum to Bitcoin on the weekly. A quick look at the extended daily. I just wanted to see um, because we are on the day losing uh against bitcoin losing value against bitcoin so uh ethereum to bitcoin is looking pretty bad and we are in another downward count we skipped this nine buy um this nine buy had a little bit of of action um but this is actually looking really bad and this has a lot to do with that bitcoin dominance you were just talking about um you know to to jump into that real quick if there's money flooding out from the alts then yeah that's definitely going to pump bitcoin dominance if there's tether being printed like crazy and and it's all through bitfinex being filtered through bitfinex to buy bitcoin and to pump bitcoin of course it's going to be pumping the bitcoin dominance but if we're as we're seeing here we're seeing altcoins lose ground especially big altcoins lose ground to bitcoin so that's that's definitely good to see i all that makes me think um right now is that when this whole thing does fall back down uh, and I'm talking big. I, I still my 4,500 isn't off the table, even if we hit 20k. Um, until I, I see a distinct change in how money is entering the space, in other words, tether is entering the space, I'm going to be strongly of the opinion that 
for the next month, maybe a little bit more, there's going to be some 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 continued foolishness going on in that front. So uh, you know, as as these as these altcoins lose ground to Bitcoin, if let's just say if this thing pops, this is a bubble and it pops, right? Well, that's just even worse for altcoins. We we were talking about Bitcoin Cash losing its 0.1 parity against Bitcoin being a, a milestone. We're talking about you know all kinds of altcoins that have slowly and steadily been losing ground against Bitcoin. Well, if Bitcoin goes up and everything's kind of stagnating or going even down a little bit, then the second Bitcoin crashes, you, we know that everything else is going to go crashing down with it. It just happens every time. There might be exceptions to the rule, but as generally speaking across the board, it's going to be an apocalypse. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to that as a Bitcoin maximalist. And I, I think we might be seeing that in coming months, probably two months as, max. As a Bitcoin, Bitcoin maximalist yourself, you know, I, I do have a question because you, know, you just went through how this printing of Tether really affected uh, you know, the price of Bitcoin and the Bitcoin market. So you know, wasn't one of the big promises of Bitcoin that it's insulated? Uh, you know, and separate from, you know, the government fiat money. Governments decide they want to print, a, you know, $100 million. They could do that and change the value of the dollar. Now, we're see aren't we seeing something similar here with Tether, where Tether is just printing, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars with a Tether, and that's actually having a direct effect on the Bitcoin market. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's, that's why I've been raising the flag, because, you know, everyone's uh, so concerned about Bitcoin being this revolution, right? And, and that's why I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. I, the, the economic and political implications run deep, and they're, they're, they serve the greatest good for the greatest number of people, no doubt. Now, if you have a, a, someone in, in control of a, the printing of money, like a government or a corporation printing tethers, well, what they're doing is they're, you know, propping up the price of Bitcoin. They've basically become, we, we've been infiltrated. Bitcoin has been in, infiltrated by an entity that it was built to and designed to fight. And even worse, people are cheering it on. So, you know, what does this mean? It means, you know, one of a couple things. It means either they're pumping the market to, to sell, which is going to be a, a violent market crash, or they're pumping the market to hoard and and take everyone's Bitcoin off the off the table, similar to let's say like an exit scam, like uh, the the founder of uh, Quadriga CX did, where he just disappeared with everyone's Bitcoin. You know, are are these players that are involved in this scheme going to just simply disappear uh, through a, through an exit scam of some sort? L less less likely. I think that there's a lot lot of things keeping their feet on the ground. You know, tied to to various companies and corporations. So. Uh, I, I think we're more likely looking at a violent market crash, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, I'm, I'm saying, guys, we have uh, the enemy that, that Bitcoin was designed to, to fight is, is inside our gates, and we need to figure out what the heck we're going to do about this, but cheering it on is definitely not the answer in my eyes. So uh, I'm looking forward to more uh, information in, in coming uh, weeks, you know, July, I think uh, in, the, in the early July 20s, we have uh, Bitfinex, uh, iFinex's response to the New York Attorney General's inquiry as to why they should be allowed to continue uh, moving forward with their prosecution and requesting documents and, and, and other such matters. Two of the main things were that the New York Attorney General should be allowed to at least continue to request documents to find out if there's some sort of criminal activity going on. So in, in what I see here is either way, we're going to find out the truth. And think, you know, the, the New York Attorney General is doing a, a darn good job to make sure that they don't lose grip on, on iFinex right now. So we'll, we at least have, uh, I mean, I'm the last person that you would have, six months ago, you would have said, Joe, do you ever see yourself supporting the regulatory side of, of the world? I would have said, not, not like this, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I would not be, you know, looking for this kind of regulatory safety. But at this point, considering that no one else cares about it except the New York Attorney General, it's like, you know, it's kind of mind boggling to me that, that they're the ones that I have to be, uh, you know, cheering on instead of the Bitcoin community saying, you know what, Tether is a, a scam and we got to distance ourselves from this. We need to ostracize them from our community. And, and that's just not happening anymore. Right. So, and so, yeah, so like that, listen, that's that's what's going on with Bitcoin. Like you said, you know, that really the, the you know, recently there has been this growing parity in, in definitely in terms of Bitcoin's dominance. Let's take a look at some of those other, you know, some of those other top coins uh, that are seem to be lagging behind. Yeah, let's let's jump in. So let's uh, let's pull these up to um, to U.S. dollar though, just quickly. <laughs> um, a quick look at at U.S. dollar. So it's also crashing on the daily. Uh, so so you know, 
it looks like we've broken through and, and we've kind of lost uh, touch with this 50 MA, the 50 moving average right now. This is pretty important. Oh, this is Ethereum Classic. Interesting. Uh, that was an accident. Uh, maybe a Freudian slip or something. I don't know. Maybe I've yeah, been talking I, I, Yeah, I was, I was thinking. Are you getting big into Ethereum <laughs> Classic? I was thinking, uh, what's going on over here? Yeah, yeah. Um, so actually, Ethereum Classic was looking a lot worse. Um, Ethereum is still uh, supported uh, above this 50 MA. I mean, we've, we've come close and we, we keep avoiding it. So Ethereum still looking bullish on uh, against the US dollar looking and, and maybe everything is on the long enough time frame. But uh, against Bitcoin, it's it's losing value. And, and Tyler brought that up yesterday. And I think it's such an important point. But right now we have no reason to panic with Ethereum. Uh, it's doing some different stuff, though, where in Bitcoin, We've created uh, the similar bull trap with uh, a lower local high and then a breach above it. Now, Bitcoin's already breached this point and even poked its head above this point. Now, it's a little different. That That is interesting to, to take note of because, uh, you know, as, as we're doing this in Bitcoin, it, this does lead me to think that there is a little bit of an exodus going on from the altcoins. So we could be seeing some continued downside action and continued Bitcoin dominance into the higher 60s and into the 70s uh, percentage points. So a uh, quick look at Litecoin US dollar on the weekly, uh, Litecoin to Bitcoin on the on the weekly looking terrible. Uh, yet again, um, as we discussed with Tyler, let's take a look at the daily. We're, we're still we're still distancing ourselves from Bitcoin. And now let's take a quick look at LTC USD. Uh, that's Litecoin US dollar on the daily. We, all right, we've broken the 50 MA. Now we have done this before and we did break back above it. Now, what I'm looking for with Litecoin is some sort of pullback and maybe even a dump, but get your like get get your stuff together, get ready because I strongly believe Litecoin's going to pump 26 days away from the happening. Get ready for that. So, whatever <laughs> happens to the downside with Litecoin, I, I just want you to be prepared for the eventuality that we could be pumping very soon i mean within within three weeks I, I i would expect us to start pumping probably a week from now um quick look at xrp we've broken the bottom end of this channel slightly been rejected by it um definitely a lower uh, not a significantly lower high but a lower high not a lower low yet uh let's just wait until until we see what happens here but if um uh, xrp us dollars is uh, looking a bit worse in my eyes now, uh, was there anything in particular you wanted me to jump at? I uh, understand I, I talk a, l a little too much. No, you uh, talk. You talk. Just keep you, running you talk just the, you talk the right, just just the right amount for us, and you really hit, uh, you know, all all the analysis that that we know and love. Is there anything that's particular that jumping out to you, like uh, Tron? Um, yeah, let's take a look at Tron here. Uh, all right, we have. Uh, there it is. All right. So Tron against Bitcoin. Yeah, this is this is such interesting information. I, I'm, I'm really glad Tyler uh, opened my eyes to this. Uh, now, Tron on the weekly is definitely looking bad. I mean, we're relative to all these lows. I mean, we're in lower territory and that's never what you want to see. Um, so everyone that's putting money into these altcoins is probably doing it because they want to get rich, right? Now, if Bitcoin's the only thing going up and everything's going down relative to it, you're not getting nearly as rich as you would have if you just would have put let your money sit in Bitcoin. So the daily is looking pretty bad. Let's take TRX USD, um, take a quick look at the daily. Um, and what we have, all right, so we've been fighting this 50 MA, uh, and this was reported by Bitfinex. So of course there's a little bit of uh, difference between Bitfinex and maybe an exchange like Binance or something. But what we have is uh, we're, we're, we ground through the uh, 50 MA, pumped out of it, and now we've broken back through it again. Uh, so this is kind of important to see how we react in this territory. I would expect us again to fall and be supported by the 200 moving average, which is trending up right now. So this isn't a huge red flag yet, but uh, Tron is, is, is displaying some interesting behavior here. We have some double tops. It, it kind of has this really interesting double top behavior. Um, so and, and we keep kind of moving up from there. So uh, we'll see. I, I don't think Tron significant, uh, you know, as far as the tech is concerned. I think this is just a vaporware money grab. So we, we have to see. But again, uh, maybe they, they, they do something that that brings back a lot of consumer confidence. But this thing is let's take a quick look at the weekly. Um, 
this thing is trending up. Uh, I would say um, it has a little bit of a flagpole similarity, but this tri this pennant is a, a little less defined than I'd like it to be. Um, I'd like it to be drawn out a little bit more. Uh, the, since the body of these candles are so large, uh, it you know I, I would like to see more of a, a formation like this, if you understand, a little sharper of angles on these. Um, but you know, in theory, this this thing is primed for for possibly even primed for a breakout uh, to the upside. Um, we do have a support floor here. We found some support here. We've we've pumped uh, you know significantly over the past few weeks. Uh, you know. 50% over the past uh, three weeks into this area. So uh, it took, and anyways, it took three weeks for us to get into this area. And and now I'm curious to see what's going to happen as we exit it. Um, are we going to grind sideways on, on the weekly? Uh, what do I see though? I, I just don't see anything conclusive. That's the problem to me with Tron. It just, it for and especially on those other exchanges when we would look at it and it has those long wicks on the top, long wicks on the bottom on a daily basis. It just shows that there's so much uncertainty with this asset, and I'm not really seeing any psychological grasp on on demand, and and that's what what's kind of throwing me off with this. What I see is a technical picture um, that looks like we have a flagpole and and a, and a pennant formation, and that does mean that we're primed for a breakout, you know, potentially into you know, uh, a, at that point it would probably be primed for about another 25% uh, move to the upside over the next few weeks if we did break out to the upside. So I think it's a it's a weird one to look at. Again, I, I just I think it's I'm looking for where's the money coming from, who's getting caught up in this. Right now, there's a lot of negative press associated with Tron, and I don't think they've done a good job really suppressing the fears and and allegations of what happened the other day with the with the raid at their facility, or or maybe not raid. Maybe it was the uh, the security guards meeting the uh, angry customers in the lobby. But um, either way, I think that there's, uh, I'm waiting to see what's going on with this external narrative that ends up probably having an impact on the price. But, mm -hmm. you know, Tron's going to be an interesting one. I, I really, uh, of all the scams out there, I think, you know, this this scam hiding behind the smile of this, you know, little butterfly looking, you know, this, uh, good, this um, you know, positive looking uh, figure, you know, it just, it just really grinds my gears, as mm -hmm. you probably are aware. Yeah. Well, so, Joe, you know, the altcoins are down. Bitcoin is up. So I'm sure uh, that makes you happy. Listen, I'm not as much of a Bitcoin maximalist as you, but as always, I do enjoy and love talking to you, having you on, having you break down the charts, especially with the way the market's going. We'll be sure to catch you soon. And for all the viewers at home, I'm Yona Hockhauser. Thanks for watching. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.